how can you persist RDDs in memory for faster access? Uh, so to persist RDD in memory for faster access, uh, in Apache Spark, we can use either uh, cache or uh, persist methods. So <clears throat> cache method, like uh, cache method is a, a default method to uh, store the data in the memory only, like the default storage level will be uh, memory only. So when you call this method, Spark will store the RDD partitions in memory across the cluster nodes, and uh, it allows for the quick access uh, during the subsequent uh, operations. So, and also we can use the persist method, like uh, in default, uh, the cache method will be used to store the data in only in, uh, in memory only. <laughs> So using the cache method, uh, by default, the storage level will be memory only. If the if the partition was not fit into the uh, memory, it will do not store. Instead, it will recompute whenever is required. And uh, second one is the persist method. So persist method is uh, another form of uh, a cache method. So the main advantage of the persist method is it can allow you to specify different uh, storage levels. So in Spark, we have a multiple storage levels are there to specify where we need to store your data and which format we need to store the data. Like first, you can see the memory only. So in the memory only format, it stores the RDD as decentralized Java object in JVM. If the RDD do not fit in the memory some partition will not be cached and will be recomputed whenever uh, is required and the second one is like uh, memory only serializer uh, like it stores the rdd as a serialized java object the main advantage of the, the memory only to serializer format is it is more uh, space efficient and it requires some more uh, cpu intensity one and uh, the next thing is memory and uh, disk it stores the data in the it, it stores the rdd uh, partitions in the memory and if any partition was not fit into the memory it will split uh, spit, uh, spill it to the disk and other option like we have a memory and a disk uh, serializer format like instead of deserialization format this will be stored the data in a uh, serializer uh, format in both memory and uh, disk and uh, second and the other one is like a disk only like store the rdd partitions only on uh, disk so like likewise we can specify the different storage levels according to our memory requirement our uh, job requirement and it can help to you to fetch the data from the uh, cache instead loading from the task so when to use this one is like uh, whenever you are uh, applying uh, whenever you are trying to recompute some sort of uh, operations on uh, existing rdd in that case if you can use this cache instead uh, recomputing the uh, data again and again it will try to use the cache to fetch the data from it and it actually much faster compared to uh, loading the data from the earlier so actually what happens uh, if you suppose if you have a two actions one by one if, if when you whenever you trigger the first action it will start loading the data from the source to it will apply all the transformation and it will execute the action and it will uh, send the results to you if the same uh, and the, when it is executing the second action means the second action was placed in the second line it will execute execute the same process from the starting to end and it will uh, compute the result so to avoid this oper uh, our, uh, complete operation if you use the cache in between these two actions it, the second cache will be uh, read data from the cache and the main uh, the cache is li like a transformation so it will wait for an action so whenever you uh, apply any sort of the cache it do not immediately compute and store the data in the memory and uh, until it finds an action. So it, it requires an action to uh, process the uh, data and to store it into the memory. How does Spark handle data partitioning in RDDs? So partitions are nothing but a logical uh, unit of the data. Like if you read a big, bigger data set, it will be divided into the multiple partitions inside the Spark. Uh, and each partition will be processed uh, parallelly so that the performance uh, will be improved. And uh, data partitions like uh, usually uh, that will depends on many other uh, uh, configurations. Uh, if you take about the default uh, configuration as for the Hadoop 2.0, it will be 64 MB so whatever the data that spark reads 64 mb will consider as one partition and it reads so if you wanted to change that 64 mb partitions you can have a configurations if you pass the configuration to the spark it will consider uh, it will consider the higher uh, 
block of unit as a one partition and also we have some other uh, transformations are available in spark which are nothing but repartition and colels functions so if you use these functions we can able to increase or decrease the uh, partitions uh, pa partition counts so partitions are the fundamental units to improve the performance of your query each partition can be taken care or executed by one core and uh, when we are reading a bigger uh, file uh, let's suppose you are reading a file which is one worth of 1 GB and if you are uh, if you fire a, a read command on the file it will actually read uh, each core will be uh, read the data 64 MB and uh, likewise it will read the number of uh, threads Splitable two formats are available if it is a split a splitable format it will allow the multiple cores to read the file parallelly if it is non splitable one though you fire uh, though you have a multiple cores in our uh, uh, program it will use only one single core to read all your data and even if the data size is less than 64 MB also it will consider only one uh, core and uh, we have other uh, configurations like when you are creating the rdd like using the parallelize or uh, text file functions we have a second parameter that we can pass that is the optional parameter which is nothing but number of partitions so if you use the number of partitions there so it will by default connect to the number of uh, threads to the source system and start reading the data and uh, we can also use the repartition on the colors usually this partitioning has uh, multiple strategies like uh, it will uh, use like a hash partitioning and range based partitioning are available so many factors are there to influence this uh, partition count that will depend on the cluster configuration and the data size as well and workload uh, distributions so these are all can participate in deciding the number of partitions can you explain the lineage graph in RDDs and its significance? So in Spark, uh, the lineage graph, uh, it, it actually tracks the history of RDD transformation, like what are all the series of the transformation that you have applied over a source. Uh, all this information will be tracked and it will be stored under the RDD uh, lineage graph. So this is the one of the property of the RDD. So if you use any of the transformation like map, filter, uh, flat map, and all this transformation, right? So this transformation will be, uh, will uh, create a new RDD. So this track will be stored in the RDD uh, lineage information so that will be stored under the uh, uh, HDFS or some persisted location so the importance of this lineage graph is like uh, the first is the fault tolerance so fault tolerance is nothing but if uh, during the execution of the spark program if any one, any one of the RDD lost due to system crashes power failures or any other issues it even have the capability to by using this lineage graph it will go to the source and it will try to reapply all the transformation on top of it and it can uh, it can maintain the same state where the current programming is running so that's how it will maintain the fault tolerance it can support the recoverability uh, using this uh, lineage like usually we should uh, replicate the data to the multiple nodes to avoid any of the fault tolerance but because of this RDD lineage we no need to replicate the data to other uh, nodes uh, that's how we can save a lot of time input output operations and uh, many other resources that we can save and also while well, debugging also it will be very much uh, useful like uh, it do not load the data immediately instead it will try to create the uh, rdd information so the developer can stack trace uh, to the previous uh, uh, rdd transmission what it went through and uh, and we can able to fix the any kind of an issue and how it works is like uh, whenever you create any of the transmission right so it will be create the rdd lineage information on the back end and that information will be stored in the any of the persisted uh, location in case of s3 it will store in the s3 in case of uh, hdfs on premise cluster it will store in the hdfs so like how it will store the rdd lineage uh, information what is lazy evaluation in apache spark rdds uh, lazy evaluation in uh, Spark means uh, the transformation on RDDs or uh, data frames uh, do not execute immediately. Instead, uh, it will wait for an uh, action. So 
so once once you trigger any of the uh, action right so then only it will start actually loading the data into the uh, uh, spark and then it will start executing the actually your operation so until then it will actually build a lineage graph that is nothing but a logical uh, execution plan and it waits for an action so actions are nothing but count collect so these are the actions so if it triggers any of the action it will trigger the execution and uh, run the process